Buenos dias, good morning. It's so wonderful to be here and see everybody in three dimensions after such a long time that we haven't been able to do that. What a sobering morning it has been, all this listening and the confrontation of some of those presentations for me personally really highlights the privilege that I have in Australia. But it also highlights the collective good that we can do in TVET, so that's absolutely wonderful. Before I talk about TAFE Queensland and our commitment to sustainability, I would like to respectfully acknowledge all the First Nations people of the countries that we come from today. I live on the land of the Yuggera Turrbal people in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. We respectfully acknowledge their elders, past and present, and those emerging leaders who will continue to share their learning with all of us for many generations to come. I need the clicker. So, TAFE Queensland. Ooh. Ooh. We've lost a bit of our presentation here. TAFE Queensland uh, is a land mass where Spain could fit neatly in three and a half times. We are 140 years old this year. We have around four and a half thousand staff. And even though we're spread from the south coasts to the northern tip of, of a country that operates in urban centres, uh, very small indigenous communities in tropical North Queensland, regional communities uh, from 57 campuses and in workplaces, we feel like a family. We feel that we're very connected. We deliver our, our services to over 110,000 students and we measure our performance. We have great employment outcomes, student satisfaction, and we're really proud of the fact that 93% or more of our employers have great satisfaction with the learners that ultimately work with them. Surprisingly, though, for many, we have a significant global presence. TAFE Queensland is a trusted uh, government TVET partner in over 90 countries, one way or another, uh, in, in partnership with governments, with industry, with TVET institutions. And at the heart of sustainability for us is diversity. We welcome students from many countries every year to study with us at TAFE Queensland. This is the top 20. Those students join with our very diverse student population right across Queensland and together with our students that are living in Queensland and our international students, we enjoy the prosperity of, of sharing culture, sharing experiences, and those students go on to form lifelong friendships. At the heart of everything that we do is our connection to industry. Like many here, we deliver a range of services and products from micro-credentials, entry-level qualifications, you know, certificates, diplomas, applied degrees. But they're very industry-connected and very relevant. We want all of our students, whether they've come from another country, whether they live in Queensland or elsewhere in Australia, to develop real skills for real work right now and into the future. So what are we doing about uh, sustainability? A few years ago, we challenged ourselves as a whole organisation to really think about what the sustainable development goals meant to us, what we could actually be doing to bring them to life. So we got together and developed a social and environmental sustainable, stand, sustainability plan, an action plan that actually has very tangible and practical things that we can do together as an organisation to bring life to the SDGs. So our staff and students and community work together to ensure that we can uh, fulfil a number of those SDGs, probably best said through having a look at this link. Not that one. So this is Queensland, in case you need a little bit of a visual reminder. This is the Gold Coast, where Karen is the general manager. And we're waiting for a short video. No? On the link, we love technology. This is one of the skills that we're developing. <laughs> no? We'll wait one more second. Not to be. 
doesn't look like the link is going to load up. So I won't take up any more of our time. I'd like to introduce Karen, who will step us through a very practical and real-life example of TAFE Queensland's commitment to sustainability. Over to you, Karen. Uh, thank you, Denise, and good morning, everyone. Uh, we've been on the Rabina campus journey for about the last three years, and this came we about We can all do I things to help the world, ourselves, and each other. Here's a few things we're doing at TAFE Queensland. Building greener and cleaner campuses and designing disability, gender and culture. Well. Continue. Later. OK, we're going to get that later. Um, as I said, uh, we um, have this is social and environmental sustainability sustainability plan and one of the key features of that plan is a, a new campus that's being developed that will open very shortly. It's called the Rabina campus and this came about because I guess about three or four years ago I was having conversations with students, uh, with my niece and nephews who were asking me um, the big questions like so what are you doing about climate change? What are you doing about modern day slavery? What's your institute doing about these matters? And I guess I started to reflect on that. And I didn't, uh, and my colleagues didn't think we were doing nearly enough. And so we started to do a lot more work about this uh, social environmental action plan. Um, the Rabina campus um, aims to set itself up as the most sustainable uh, vocational training institute in Australia. It opens its doors on the 11th of July, and what I plan to do today is just go through uh, some of the key features of that campus and how we are going to establish it as the most sustainable institute in the country. So some of the features that are, um, so every aspect of sustainability is built into everything. So from the campus design, to the fit out, to the course curriculum, to student life, to procurement, governance, culture. Um, we've been on this journey for two and a half years and, uh, and I can tell you there's a whole lot of excitement with the staff back home at the moment and getting ready to open the doors. Uh, the courses that are being offered there, which has a huge bearing on the priorities that we're choosing to look at, are commercial cookery, uh, hospitality, which is really um, the thing we're focused on most, uh, early childhood, sport and rec, hair and beauty, barbering, English language studies, and we'll open a virtual business college uh, later in the year. So what we're doing is actually underpinned by the uh, sustainability, uh, the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals, and we have um, One. we have no presentation. Okay, it's <laughs> <I'm> not lighting <laughs> up. There's some beautiful images coming soon. Um, so there are um, three broad, broad pillars uh, that we look at, and it's people, planet, and performance. And so, as most people would be aware, sustainability isn't all about environmental sustainability. Sustainability is absolutely much broader than that. And so we tried to find a balance in the um, SDGs that we were going to be focused on for the first 18 months of our opening. All 17 SDGs are absolutely critical to our functioning, but there is an absolute focus on uh, the six that are on those slides. And I won't go into uh, to all of them, but that they are there for you to have review. Um, one of the things that we are aiming to do at the campus is not only to embed sustainability into all the course curriculum, but to give students an experience. And, uh, and I'll talk more about that and you'll get to see some of that, what that immersive experience looks like. We also want to challenge our students. We want to challenge their behaviours. We want to challenge their thoughts around some of the key issues related to sustainability. Ultimately, our, get, our goal is to um, start to change some of the habits, start to change some of their thoughts in relation to sustainability and assist them to make better choices into the future. We are measuring everything, and to that end, we're using the STARS rating system. You may be familiar with that. It tends to be, uh, it's a sustainability tracking and assessment rating system. It tends to be used by higher education, and we figured that if we wanted to set ourselves up as the best in the country, then we needed to really lift the bar. Um, so it's really rigorous reporting. We report, make it very visual. As you walk into the campus, you'll see how we're going against um, energy uses, in energy use, water use, and a whole range of other measures. 
So what does this look like on the ground? I'm just going to skim through some of the things that the campus actually features. So we have gone through um, provision of um, orientation and education, lifting the understanding of what sustainability is with all of our staff through an online uh, module that they've completed. We've gone through information sessions on recycling and waste management, and that's a key feature of what we're doing at the campus. And we have uh, bins on all levels, levels. they're all colour coded and easy to use. We have every Everything in the campus is compostable and biodegradable. We have no plastic in the campus. At the cafe, there, you cannot use a plastic or a, a paper cup. You have to come in and use your keep cup. And then, uh, and the same for water. There's water flasks, so there's hydration stations, and you fill up your water flask. And then, when people are clearly, um, we incentivise them to do that by the next time they come back to get their coffee or water. It's a whole lot cheaper. Um, all of the food that we have a cafe and a restaurant that I'll talk more about that we are actually operating. Um, all of the food that's uh, sourced uh, for the uh, cafe and restaurant are sourced from a, a hundred kilometre perimeter around the campus. We, we've gone with local breweries, local bakers, um, and we've absolutely, and I think this is one of the big items that we've done, is we've looked at our supply, change, re, supply chains really very critically. So we've made sure that they have the green credentials, that we have been able to go back and be confident that the supply chain is one that isn't, um, particularly for some of the furnishings that were coming in from offshore, we wanted to be sure that it wasn't, there was no sort of modern day slavery occurring in the making of any of the furnishings going into the campus. We also have, when we, when we did a waste audit, we identified that our biggest uh, waste was organic waste. So we have a massive organic waster, which is almost, it's a feature as you walk into the, the campus. Um, and that is something that we will, once the organic waste is completed, it goes back out to the suppliers. We have a big um, bottle crusher, again, to reduce the volume of waste uh, glass that's being produced so it can be easily transported. We had healthy options in the cafe and restaurants, so more organic options, more healthy, more vegan options. We have um, no plastic milk bottles. It's all this um, automatic eye milk that's on a tap. The same in the restaurants. It's a wine dispense from a tap, although we will have some bottles. We have limited paper use. Um, we have uh, the campus is about 7,700 square metres and we have two printers in the campus. It is a BYO device campus so students are 100% uh, bring their own device uh, and I'll talk more about the learning spaces later which makes sense of why students are bringing their own devices. We have put a lot of effort into end of trip facilities and we have an active transportation plan so really strongly encouraging um, our staff and students to come to the campus via public transportation, bus, scooter uh, and there's a lot of incentives to do that. We have arrangements with line bikes and with a local bike group uh, so people have subsidised uh, you know, access to those bikes if they want to. We also have, once people arrive at campus, uh, they do a QR code and identify how they've got to campus, so we collect information on how people are getting there, and again, they're incentivised if they've you know, come in and use public transportation or a bike, they gather points that they can then use at the canteen um, at a late, or the cafe at a later uh, time. We have electric cars, we limit our, you know, we don't, we do meetings virtually, we use electric cars only, um, and we work very closely with the local council, and if anyone, was in our neighbourhood, you would see there are signage everywhere uh, in the Rabina neighbourhood encouraging people to use public transportation to get to the, to, to the TAFE. Um, there's a whole range of other um, really important initiatives that are underway. We have 250 solar panels on the roof, which throughout the fit-out stage, we've relied on a lot of the solar power to, to provide a source of power. Now, it's not adequate at the moment, but uh, we hope in time that that will be the primary source of power. We have unif uh, uniforms that have been sustainably um, uh, um, pulled together. I mean, basically the natural fibres and um, a sustainable focus in terms of the uniforms. We have recycled timbers used throughout the whole of the campus. Um, the carpets um, are, are completely recyclable, so you can pull apart the nylon and the rubber on the bottom and you can um, reuse them again into the future. And there's uh, one particular carpet we've, um, we've used downstairs um, was actually made of um, old fishing nets. So there's some beautiful stories to be told. We have all the um, obvious things like a um, building management system, so you, when you walk out of the room, the lights go off, and we have solar glass and a range of other features. 
but and this uh, image here is as you walk into the campus, um, and this is just a 3D image, so it's not, it doesn't look exactly like that. It's much more beautiful, and there's a lot more plants and that around. Uh, but the whole idea is we wanted to engage students, so when they came into the campus, rather than you know the typical signs you might see, we wanted the first thing to hit them was the message around sustainability, and we wanted them to be a bit excited about exploring the environment. So that massive, if you, we can't see it well here, but that that massive um, blue on the ceiling. It's a projected image and you have dolphins swimming across there or, or, or any underwater animals. It's really very beautiful and the whole area downstairs is very calming and encouraging of students to come in there. Um, they're all, all four, we've got a ground level then four stories. Each level has a theme. So we start off in the underwater world, then we move to the ocean and then to the earth to the rainforest canopy and then to the sky. And as you walk into each of these levels, um, you have a whole range of experiences, information, sustainability messages. Um, there's lots of things that you can touch and feel. Um, we also have um, lots of Instagram moments, so lots of interactive art. You know, so the, the one where you're holding the globe in your hand, um, another where you might be you know, blowing butterflies into an environment. And again, things that will encourage students to interact with the environment. <laughs> okay. Um, the other really cool thing um, is that we've introduced, so when you go around, you can use a QR code. All the features in the campus, you can use a QR code. And we've in introduced augmented reality. So they can do the QR code, hold their phone, and a little person jumps up and provides information on the, for about 30 seconds on what you're looking at. And, you know, I mean, the, the students that have been through so far just love it, that whole interaction um, with augmented reality and, and um, technology. We're running, and I, I am running out of time, so we have, we, we've decided to run the four venues at the campus ourselves, so we're running them as commercial businesses. The rationale for this is that we could control the, uh, the, control the supply chain, we can make sure that all of the cafe, restaurants, the gym and events centre is 100% committed to sustainability, and we provide our students an experience working in eco-friendly events um, and sustainability events that they may not, because I think there's a lot of events, uh, and, sorry, a lot of venues at the moment that are not necessarily giving students that experience. So we're creating it in our campus. Students can come in and build the most contemporary skills in um, sustainability. Um, we also have an opportunity to in influence the public that, when they come in. So it's not only students and staff, but also the community that we're aiming to influence. Um, um, just quickly, and just another two minutes, we have um, the governance of the campus. We have six students, six staff, and they meet on bi-monthly. They apply the rule of St. Benedict's, uh, which is the youngest in the room speaks first, the most senior speaks last. Um, and they, they meet wherever the students want to meet. And again, it's all about empowering the uh, people in the campus, our students in the campus, to take control of sustainability and to be running with it. Um, the Jewel and the Crown are our learning spaces, and uh, I, I mean about, well, two years ago when we planned it, it was about the time of COVID hit, um, it was a pretty stock standard um, learning spaces. All of that got thrown out a year ago, and now we have probably the most contemporary learning facilities, certainly in Australia. Um, with the use of high resolution cameras, so as the teacher teaches, the camera's like, follow you around, you go in to look at something closely, Ooh, the camera comes down, um, just super, and um, if you ever get a chance, have a look at these high resolution cameras, they're amazing. All the learning spaces, they can have big rooms, they can shrink to smaller rooms, um, tons of collaboration booths, because the whole way of the future is about uh, teaching people creativity and collaboration in spaces that are different than what we've had in the past, and obviously, um, you, all the technology in the world and that we've got like the most amazing technology wouldn't work if we didn't support our teachers on that learning journey. Six months of practicing, practice, practice, and now we've got to our point and I watch the feed from the teachers and they are loving this space. There's about 45 to 50 teachers that are going to be working at Rabina and they are so excited. And someone mentioned, I think, at the Affinity class um, how important it was to create these communities of practice and I think that's what we've been able to achieve. Um, and not only that, we've obviously embedded sustainability into the program itself, um, and largely to obviously build about collaboration, uh, places where students can come and be creative. Um, our goal is to establish this campus as the most sustainable campus in the country that supports terrific 
technical and vocational education, but in addition to that is building an awareness of un an understanding of sustainability to ultimately build um, the most amazing global citizens. Thank you.